Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Jones AT&T Stadium on the campus of Texas Tech University, where today the Red Raider football team will stage their spring game. Hello, I'm David Thetford. Joining me for the broadcast, former Red Raider great at quarterback, Cody Hodges. Well, Cody, good to have you along today. You've been around these many times. I bet you've never felt the energy and excitement like it's around Red Raider football right now. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's loud in here. There's a lot of people here. I mean, the spring game is kind of a big deal, but this year it just seems like, 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 like there's a, it's just a different vibe. You know, the new coaching staff and people are excited, so it'll be, it'll be a fun day. It really will be. Coaches are going to be looking for impact players. Let's take a look at a couple on offense and a couple on defense presented by Carillon. First up on the offensive side of the ball, Cody, Jason Morrow, a big guy. He's gotten bigger. He'll be a real difference maker. He is. Jason's one of those guys that had a great year last year. Um, but now with the new quarterback, whoever that might be, he's the guy that needs to step up, make plays, but also lead uh, these young receivers, but then also be a, a, a security blanket for the new quarterback. Texas Tech has a stable of really good running backs, but in order to be a great running back, you better have a really good offensive line. LaRaven Clark, really the only guy that has much experience. He is LaRaven, the left tackle, kind of important. These both guys are right-handed, so he's got that blind side. Uh, but he's the guy that's played the most, and he needs to hold down the front. Um, you know, without those guys up front, you can't move the ball. So they've got a lot of pressure on them. Then on the defensive side of the football for Texas Tech, I guess that uh, the name that a lot of people have been talking about has been Kerry Hyder. Had a good year last year. Big things expected from him. He is. I know uh, the new defensive staff coming in, they're looking at him to kind of be the leader there and, uh, and make plays and rally the young guys. A lot of guys are going to have to step up, and he's the guy that they need to look to to kind of be the leader there on defense. Another question mark for Texas Tech on defense will be in the secondary. Trey Porter's back there, and he'll have to be a, a guy that they can count on. He is uh, the secondary. They lost a lot of guys from last year, great players. So Trey's kind of the veteran of the group, needs to step up, and those young guys need to look at him to, to start making plays and get turnovers on the defensive side of the ball. Well, that was your look at today's impact players presented by Carillon. Carillon is the exclusive retirement community of Texas Tech Athletics, providing the most comprehensive retirement choice to the Lubbock community, including the security of life care. For more information, visit carillonlubbock.com. Well, joining Cody and I today for the broadcast will be Courtney Davis, and she's got to talk about the quarterback's big decision coming up there. Let's go to Courtney. Guys, the common assumption following the Meineke Car Care Bowl of Texas was that Michael Brewer would be your starter heading into the 2013 season. However, the sophomore out of Lake Travis, Texas, has found himself in a battle yet again with number seven. This time, though, seven goes by Davis Webb. Now, keep in mind, Davis should be preparing for his senior prom as we speak, which is tonight in Prosper. However, he's out here at Jones AT&T Stadium competing to be the starter for the Red Raider football team. Now, statistically, throughout the spring, Brewer has edged Webb out. However, both have shown absolute signs of brilliance and swag as coach Kingsbury would call it so no doubt we are in for a show here in the annual spring game David the Texas Tech football spring game coming up next you're watching Texas Tech football on Fox Welcome back to Texas Tech University. Jones at and Stadium, David Thetford along with Cody Hodges, the Texas Tech spring game. Great crowd here today. And we're about set. We're getting this game underway and going here. The offense and the defense going after one another. And I guess, uh, you know, Cody, you, you always wonder about these scrimmages and things like this. Because if one team is just really dominant, <laughs> then you're thinking, oh, our defense needs some work. So you'd like to see both teams with some success today. Definitely a lot of play on the quarterback here between Brewer and uh, Webb and seeing who's going to kind of lead this in the fall. There's Brewer. First pass going to be incomplete. Across the middle, a little slant route. And it uh, looked like he got there, but uh, pretty congested. And it, But that's really... Texas Tech football. It is, and you got to think the defense has been going against these guys all spring, so they know what's coming, so they've got it in a little advantage today. Second down, the ball at the 34-yard line. The offense with the football will go over the scoring here this afternoon. Pass to the outside, caught up the sideline, the 45, and out of bounds here on the near side. It should be close to a first down for the offense. Oh, 
quickly back to it, and uh, there won't be much. You're going to jump in quick. There's Amaro. We were talking about him as an impact player here this afternoon, but more importantly in the fall. It is. I mean, that's a big target. You see right there what he's capable of. It catches a two-yard pass and falls forward for about eight yards. We do have our rosters on the way up uh, right now. Here's another quick hitter, Amaro once again. This at the 45 of the defense as they cross midfield. Going to be another first down for the offense. And Coach, uh, there's uh, Michael Brewer, and he's doing the he's doing the flip. He's changing <laughs> from one side of the the offense is set to the other. We'll get that this time up through the middle, running hard with the football. I think that's something we've got to do um, consistently next fall is to run the ball well on yeah. first down. Well, that's a guy right there in Hill that can get it done for you. Big, strong running back. Here we go out to this uh, near side and and uh, another first down. So the offense here, Cody, as we start out here today, often doing often doing well. They are. The tempo's great. They're getting a lot of plays and not really letting the defense adjust to anything. You know, that uh, the first reception, I think, was to Reginald Davis, number two. And uh, interesting to see how he does. Only a freshman. There's a run once again off the left side. Just uh, Kenny Williams weaving his way in and out and picks up about three or four on the play. Going to be... Second down coming up for the offense, moving right down the field with uh, Michael Brewer in the shotgun at quarterback. Kenny Williams on one side. And Sadell Foster on the other. He takes the swing pass, which was really a lateral, having to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage, and he'll get uh, to near the 26-yard line. But that, uh, that little swing pass, backwards pass on that one. Yeah, he worked hard to gain about half a yard there. So good, <laughs> good, good play by him to get back third down. And no question about it, because he, he got the ball about seven or eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. Brewer looking to the far side. On the east side of the field, it's kind of weird for our Tech quarterbacks to be looking to that, to that side. Defense. Our first penalty of the ball game, illegal procedure, will be called against the offense. Quentin White's out there as uh, running back, number 37. He's out of College Station, uh, Texas. 5'7", 197, a freshman red shirt, and a lot of uh, and lots of talk about Quentin White and what he'll bring to the ball game. Three receivers up top. Brewer looking to pass, looking left, hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down. And I don't know who exactly who got that one, but uh, Dante Phillips was one of those guys. Maybe we can see it here if we get a chance to look at it on a replay. Really don't have much time with tech, uh, offense the way it's so quick. It moves so quick. Fourth down now for the offense. And about nine needed. So Texas Tech will go for it at the 31-yard line. Has some time. Now having to roll left. Throws it underneath. Incomplete. On the move that time was Reginald Davis, and he could not... Uh, he kind of, the ball was back in on him just a little bit, and he couldn't control it. But normally, as a quarterback, Cody, you expect him to catch that one. You do. Yeah, Brewer did a good job there. Got some pressure from his left side, was able to avoid the rush. And that's something in this offense you got to do is create plays and, uh, you know, you know make, make, extend the play. Brewer did a good job. Receiver just dropped it and turnover. That's one thing I, I believe that, uh, of course, Michael Brewer will, will bring to the team. Daggy could run a little bit, but, but did not typically do that. And Brewer has a great athletic ability to get out and run much like you did. You could get out and move around a little bit and uh, yeah, and try to uh, create something. Let's take a look at the scoring guide. Uh, here you'll see how it'll be set up today for the offense. A touchdown is worth six points, extra point worth one, field goal worth three, so that's the same as always. But defensively, they will get... Uh, if they get a touchdown, it'll be six. Fourth down stop is three points. So the defense is on the board first with three points, and it's up there on the scoreboard. A missed field goal is worth three, a turnover three points, and there a sack was worth uh, two points, I believe. And then uh, three and out is one point for the defense. There's a Texas Tech baseball team. Want to remind everybody that uh, Texas Tech baseball playing this evening at 6.30. 
at Dan Law Field at uh, that game at 630 tonight. Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. Are we going to go down to the sideline? And let's go down to the sideline. Courtney Davis has the head baseball coach, Tim Tadlock. Thanks, guys. Coach Tadlock, y'all are in a big series with Kansas over at Rip Griffin Park. Not the decision you wanted last night, but talk about how your guys played. No, oh, I mean, they played hard the whole night. No, we didn't get the results we wanted. And we're uh, looking forward to tonight with Trey Massick going, and hopefully some of these people out here can make it over there to the Rip. Absolutely. 6.30 pitch, first pitch, right? Talk about Mossick, his first Big 12 start since he's coming back from injury. Yeah, I mean, he's excited to get back on the mound. The guys are always uh, confident playing behind him, and we know we got our hands full with their guy tonight, and we'll go out and try to put it together. Thanks, Coach Tadlock. Best of luck tonight. 6.30 first you. pitch over at Rip Griffin Park. We'll see you there. Right. David? Thank you, Courtney, and thank you, Coach. We appreciate you. Good luck to you tonight against the Jayhawks at 6.30, then the final game of that series at 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Here we go again. New quarterback in the ball game. Davis Webb swings it to the outside. Going to be hit down for a loss out there at around the 30-yard line. That's Quentin White out of the backfield with the reception. And, Cody, there's a lot of talk about uh, Davis Webb and, this, and the skill level that he has. I mean, just think he should be at his high school prom today, but he's playing in a spring game. So uh, big things expected for this young man. There's Quentin White breaking tackles, gets uh, all the way across the 41-yard line out to the 42, and that'll be a first down for the offense with Davis Webb at quarterback. Well, he's a big young man. 194-pound freshman throws that one behind his receiver. He was sliding down, trying to come up with it. And on that uh, attempt that time was Brent Mitchum out of Houston, Texas. He played at Sock Creek. He's a junior. Of course, Davis Webb out of Prosper, Texas. Right out of high school, as Cody mentioned, still should be in high school. There's a quick uh, turn in and a reception up across the 45 out to the 47-yard line. That time on the receiving, receiving end, Jordan Davis. He's out of Arlington. And quickly back to it. Back to the way these games go so quickly now. And it's, all, it's so much about speed, Cody. And with uh, Cliff, you know, we've been running fast here a long time. He's turning it up from there. He is. Uh, he, uh, I mean, he gets the play, and as soon as that play's over, he's already on to the next player or the next play after that. So defense has no time to set up. Absolutely, and, and, or to make changes. Now, if you change offensive personnel, then the, the defense gets to make a change. But uh, Quentin White this time, straight ahead for the first down. Picked it up easily. And uh, Davis, was, uh, he was, Davis Webb was already over the sideline after he handed the ball off, getting the next play. <laughs> Ready to go. Oh, that snap. Down. Yep, going to be chase that one down, just cover it up back at the 30-yard line. You get it going, have it going so good. What does that do to you right there, Cody? It's tough. You know, they just picked up the first down there on fourth, and now instead of first and 10, we're looking at second and, I don't know, 25. So... <laughs> Yeah. You don't have a lot of plays for second and 25 in your playbook. So as a young guy, he needs to get about 10 back here and make it third and manageable. Taking a little time this time. What's the very wide splits for the Red Raiders? Here's a little throw out of the backfield. Quentin White trying to set it up. He'll cut it back inside. Good defense by the uh, Red Raiders there. They really stretched it out well. Danelle Wesley comes over to make the stop. 6'1", 286 out of Hastings, Florida. And that uh, was really well read by the defense there. And I thought Webb did a good job of trying to sell it, that he was going somewhere else. And I think all the time he was looking to throw that little underneath pattern to his running back. Three wideouts to the near side. Webb going to roll to the left, looking to throw to the sideline, out of bounds. Good coverage back there by Texas Tech's defense. As uh, coming up and was in excellent uh, position was uh, Thierry Nugema. Nugema. He's another freshman out of Corona, California. Santiago is, his high, is the last school he played at. Davis did a good job there. I mean, pressure in third and 25, you can't do a whole lot. Didn't turn it over, and punt team comes out. Live, it, live to see another down. Sometimes that's just what you have to do. Really, most people don't like, they don't want to do that. Quarterbacks don't like throwing away, uh, but sometimes it's better to be smart than turn the ball over in your own territory there and give the, you know, the opposing team a short field. Well, there's a nice punt with the wind. 
and it uh, will be the offense back on here when we come back. Texas Tech spring game right here on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to the Texas Tech spring game. David Thetford along with Cody Hodges and our sideline reporter, Courtney Davis. 5-0 here, the early score. The defense with the lead, and I, I don't know if a lot of people thought that would happen. Uh, probably not, <laughs> but uh, hopefully the offense will get going here soon. Here's the uh, Williams with the football again, running to the outside. Great spin move. He's going to pick up a 10, 11 yards on that great move. As he got to the outside. Davis Webb still in at quarterback for the offense and a heck of a move there by Williams that was a great play picked up an additional four or five yards and easy first down he's five nine he looks bigger than that 219 he's, he's got a big frame out of Pflugerville Texas played at Hendrickson first down and ten for the offense three wide outs to the near side now empty backfield as Williams Comes and sets in the slot on the outside. A little underneath pattern, wide open, catch and another first down, pickup of 13 yards. That time on the a little underneath pattern to Derek Edwards, Renham, Texas, sophomore. Tackle made by number seven, Will Smith. Will Smith made the tackle from his linebacker position. There a short gain up through the middle for a couple of yards. Kenny Williams once again on the carry. And Micah Alway with the stop. He's out of Arlington Summit. Second down and nine for the offense. Swing pass out of the backfield once again. Trying to get to the corner and can't do it. Quentin White with the catch and the run, but a heck of a play out there by Chris Payne, a uh, senior out of Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, there's a lot to that play. The receivers got the block, and when they miss blocks, it's uh, it's a no-go. It's on over. That play. It's over for that guy. <laughs> yeah, because he's looking to watch the ball in, and he, he really has no time to even adjust and make a move. We have straight drop back across the middle. What an arm. Great throw. That one caught across the 45, down to the 43, then driven back. Oh, that was Brewer on the pass. I've got Davis Webb as number seven. Right, it is I agree. Davis Webb. Yes, sir. Yes, Davis Webb is at quarterback, and that was an unbelievable rocket pass there. Sadell Foster trying to make a move, and again, that play blown up early, and Foster did a nice job of making anything out of that. Stop made by number 24, Bruce Jones. First guy there was Bruce Jones. He's number 24, 5'7", senior, out of Eastville, California. Second down and seven. Webb will give it to uh, Williams running up through the middle. He's going to have a first down at the 31-yard line. Good blocking. And, Cody, that's that's one of the big question marks is this offensive line. What can they get done? Yeah, I mean, a bunch of young guys coming back, only one starter returning. And, I mean, that was a big hole, easy pickup. Move the chains. Passed out to uh, Jason Morrow for really about a yard gained is all. That is Davis Webb at quarterback. Kenny Williams in the backfield. We try to get those linemen for you. Over at uh, left tackle is LaRaven Clark. He's number 62, and there's another completion across the middle. Going to be close to another first down at the 21-yard line. You can tell already Davis has got a good understanding of the offense to be here just at semester and picking it up and making completions. Um, he's got a bright, bright future for him. He will fake it this time to Williams. Rolling right, buying time, back across the middle, into the end zone, going to throw it away. Didn't have anything there. He bought some time, Cody, and I, you know, a lot of quarterbacks won't do that. They won't throw it away. They're going to try to make a play, and that's really smart. It is, I mean, especially here. They're not going to allow the quarterbacks to run. They want to take a shot, so there he could either run or throw it away. He made the smart choice and play another down. Here we go again, a little... Inside move, great move to the outside. Quentin White with the ball, and he'll be chased out of bounds at around the 10-yard line. That's going to be another first down. They've run about three plays on this drive that have been 11-yard plays. All enough for the first down. Give up to the middle, and great defensive up front that time. It's coming up to make the stop was uh, Brandon Jackson. 
number nine. He's a 6'4", 248 soft pound sophomore out of uh, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. 5-0, the defense with the early lead here. Offense threatening now, and there's another throwaway by Davis Webb. Smart decision on his part. Defense is secondary playing well. I mean, nobody's open. Throw it away. And that, uh, that was another question mark. I, I don't know. I guess the two maybe biggest question marks coming in here today and this spring were offensive line and defensive secondary. And uh, those they've really worked hard to try to answer those questions. And I, from what we've seen today, it's been a pretty good job on both sides. The offensive line done, has done a nice job of blocking, and the secondary, I think, has been in great position on most passes. They have third down here, third and goal. Third and goal into the end zone. Tipped up in the air and knocked away. And that was a big-time play there by Chris Payne. He just dropped back in that area and read it well and knocked it away. Fourth down coming up. Payne, a 187-pound senior. It's a big stop for the defense. Anytime you can hold a team to maybe three points is huge. Going to try to get uh, some points out of this uh, drive. The offense now, this is their third possession. And uh, so far have not uh, anything to show for it. Rod Buston, who returns from last year, will come on to try to get the three up on the board for the offense. And it is no good. Missed it wide left, I believe. I couldn't tell for sure. Still 5-0. The defense leading the offense here in the Texas Tech spring game. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. Texas Tech fans, we want to remind you to become a Red Raider Club member today. Your donation to the Red Raider Scholarship Fund is principal to our student athletes who will use the values and lessons learned at Texas Tech as the foundation for the rest of their lives. Red Raider Club, the exclusive scholarship fund of Texas Tech Athletics. Back to the game here. Defense leading 8-0. That missed field goal not only does not count three points for the offense, it counts three for the defense. I guess that's Brewer back that in there Brewer's now. back in, yep. At quarterback. It really has, uh, we did not know that there was going to be a quarterback battle coming into this season. But uh, Davis Webb, the freshman, has uh, came early and has really uh, opened everybody's eyes. He's such a, such a talented young man. Of course, so is Michael Brewer. Check that pass out up across the 35, up to the 36-yard uh, line. And, and Cody... That's the kind of throws you like to see Brewer make. It. Yeah, great. I mean, he had a guy underneath, but he was able to hold it for the next window and get the guy downfield. Big time throw by him. You have that internal clock in your head, and now we're already back to the action again. And a big hit there and shaking up a little bit. Can't see the number for sure. If it's Jordan Davis, maybe we get a better look here on the replay. He took a big hit. Little swing pass again out of the backfield. Good blocking this time up the sideline and chased out of bounds on the far side of the field. Quentin White with the reception. It was a great block. I think that was number nine, Sean Corker. Great block by the receiver there on the outside for the swing pass. We'll give it again. First down out to midfield and into the defensive side of the, uh, across the 50. Moving the sticks once again. The offense has been able to move the ball a little bit, but he can't. Uh, you got to finish drives. We yeah, have you got to finish keep, drives. There you go. They don't give you any points for just crossing the 50. They don't. <laughs> it would be nice if they did, uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Illegal procedure, second penalty of the ball game against the offense. The only two penalties have been against the offense. Of course, there are no punt returns, or although we did have a kickoff return to, be, to begin the ball game, which is kind of weird. They kicked it out of the end zone, and all of a sudden, the guy's <laughs> running with the ball. They pitched him another ball. First down and 15 now for Michael Brewer, who's at quarterback and his offensive teammates. Here's a ball thrown to the outside. Nice touch pass caught at the 25, and inside the 20, down near the 15-yard line. Great throw by Brewer. Man coverage on the outside. Receiver did a great job. Brewer, great pass. Big time play. I think it was Corker. It was, yeah. Number nine just came up with a big block, big catch. Sean Corker, Jr. out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now run up through the middle for a couple of yards. 
And the offense now quick trying to get into the end zone trailing 8 0 here in the first quarter. These first two quarters will be timed pretty much like a normal football game. Then the second half will be a running clock. A scrimmage expected to last a, a couple of hours here. Be through around 3 o'clock. Brewer looking left. Now back right. Has a man caught at the seven-yard line and knocked down immediately. Short of the first down. On the catch that time was Reginald Davis. Third and about three. Maybe a, a long three here. Need to get the first down. Keep the drive alive. Keep the, get yourself a new set of downs with first and goal. They can do that at the four-yard line. And now Brewer will call timeout. Evidently had uh, some alignment problems getting getting everybody set. And that will give us a chance. You know, uh, Cody Hodges alongside here, former Red Raider great at quarterback. And, Cody, you, uh, you know what those guys are experiencing out there at quarterback. There is a lot on you. And in a, in a fast-paced offense, which you ran under Coach Leach, it's difficult to keep, keep everybody moving. It is. I mean, just watching this live, you know, here from up top. I mean, I thought we were fast. Uh, Cliff is... Uh, Coach Kingsbury is taking it to a different speed. I mean, they're calling plays as fast as they can. Both quarterbacks doing a great job. I mean, they are in a battle. Um, Davis Webb has done a great job coming in early, enrolling early, graduating high school, and now is, you know, trying to make a push to be the guy. Um, Brewer, you know, has been here for a few years. Um, you know, I think this is a big day for him just to kind of to make plays and, and score points. That's what we need to do on this drive. Well, Brewer, an outstanding player out of high school, and a lot of people, I think, have been looking to Michael Brewer to be the guy, and who knows? Kenny Williams with the give straight ahead inside the five. I think he's going to be a little bit short of the first down by about a yard. I bet we go for it here. You think? I bet so. Yep. I think there's a good chance of that. Brewer with the play. He'll he will call it out. We're still going to try to give you some offensive linemen and who's out there. It's Quentin White is... The back in motion. Here's Williams going to be spun around and stopped. He will not get there. The defense is up to the task again. You hate to see that as an offense get stopped there. But defense, you know, it's a big play for them guys. They That's what I play mean. Play after play. Yeah. Chris so. Payne was there again, also out there that time. Uh, Brandon DeFrance. No, excuse me, Keenan Ward was the guy that was there. 5'9", 189 pounders. Another freshman out of... Uh, Snyder, Texas, and a lot of big things expected from him. I guess it was Ward that uh, we have a couple of 35s, but the other one's a wide receiver. So it's uh, another good stop by the defense and another three points up on the board. It's 11-0, the Texas Tech defense leading the Texas Tech offense here in the early going here with about 326 to go in the first quarter. And I, you know, if you're the if you're the defense, that gets back. Let's look at the schedule coming up uh, here for 2013. All opens on August the 30th at SMU. Wish it was home, but uh, there'll be a huge crowd in Dallas. I know you're probably glad it's down at SMU, but that'll that is, be a my fun game. That's a Friday night game, so I that'll be, uh, be exciting uh, to see the, the Cliff Air start officially. There'll, there'll be a bunch of people down there for the Coach Kingsbury start, I can tell you. And then Stephen F. Austin, TCU, and Texas State, and. Uh, then uh, those games all here in Lubbock, and then Kansas on the road to get Big 12 play started. Brewer still in at quarterback here. We'll take a look at the schedule a little bit more later on. Brewer stays in there. He's going to run with the football. I think that's a good call. They can't tackle him. <laughs> that ought to go for six. <laughs> Uh, Brewer does, like you were mentioning, he has the wheels, and that's a huge part of this offense is the quarterback running. I think it's going to, with the quarterback, it's just a touch football with the quarterback. You know, that used to be Coach McVay's job. He used to blow the whistle back there when the quarterbacks would get touched, but they uh, they took his whistle away from him today. <laughs> did they really? They did. They told him he couldn't do it. Well, he's done it for a lot of years for Texas Tech. He had a huge impact on uh, so many of you guys over the last 15, 17 years that he's been here at Texas Tech. What a positive influence, Tommy McVay. Here's a ball knocked down back in the backfield. Good defense once again. Will Smith there on the deflection. Yep, Will Smith. You know, uh, it's hard to believe that Will Smith's already a senior now, 6'3", 224. And uh, he's going to be, uh, I guess, uh, if you had to say a linebacker that was going to be the, uh, we counting on you, Will Smith this year he is great play um, been here for a while it goes quick it goes quick it and really again, does go another quick. another I mean three and out by the offense so 
good for the defense, not what you want your offense to do. There's the punt. It's a pretty nice punt into the wind right there. And it will uh, be back around the 40 yard line or so. 40, let's see where they're going to mark you. 41 yard line on the south end of the field here at Jones AT&T Stadium. And an outstanding crowd. Cody, you can probably remember back to your spring game here at Texas Tech. How does this compare? I, I don't really remember this many people being there. Um, <laughs> you know, the spring game, let's be honest, it's kind of a, a glorified practice. But the, the fans are excited, you know. Uh, they're ready to see the new staff, these players. Um, it'll be a great day uh, here in Lubbock to be a Red Raider fan. No question about it. And y'all, let me tell you, they were here early. It was like a typical game day. They were tailgating. Uh, the fans, we went to Midland and uh, had a day down there. And the support down in Midland was phenomenal. And uh, boy, we just appreciate Red Raider fans all over everywhere. They're all over the country. But one of the hotbeds is in your neck of the woods in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I know they're excited to have Texas Tech at SMU to open the 2013 season. Nick Brewer, is that still... Uh, that's still Brewer in the ball game. Uh, Webb. Nope, it's Davis, Davis Webb back in the ball game. And Quentin White going to be spun down. Brandon Jackson on the stop, the linebacker, 248-pounder. Here's a fake up through the middle, trying to throw the little seam pass going uh, down the uh, down the middle of the field to Aaron Fisher and just missed the hookup. That's one of those plays. I mean, they've Texas been running the ball really well. You think those linebackers cheating, you might get a sneak one behind. We just missed connection there. You might help the with the with the play call. How's, tell me what this play call would be in the huddle. Um, this one right here. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I bet you do. Here's a deep pass down uh, the middle. Has a man just off the fingertips. Fisher again. I guess they got it back there and said, let's try it again. I'll throw it deeper this time, but a little too deep. Yeah, after watching the play, it was verticals. Um, all four receivers ran verticals. So, um, again, wide open. Just, uh, again, Davis being here kind of fresh. That'll come with timing. But, again, to the defense, another three and out for the Red Raider offense. Uh, if you're... Defensive-minded uh, at uh, Texas Tech, and uh, it's been a long time since people have been defensive-minded here at Texas Tech. It's been all about the offense for a lot of years. Uh, I think uh, Coach Tuberville, you know, he was working the direction with defense, but uh, Coach Leach, he opened it up big time. And we continued that even with uh, trying to keep running that uh, fast-paced offense. Another nice punt. And uh, Ryan Erksleben, He's a senior this year out of Lake Travis, and I'm telling you, he has kicked, the, he has punted the ball extremely well today. Back out there receiving, Jakeem Grant, and uh, I know that Grant, that uh, 5'6", 163, is a sophomore this year. He was a big-time uh, contributor last year, made some huge plays for Texas Tech. Looking for him this year to uh, to do a lot of damage in the return game and also uh, some of the wide receiver. So it's 13-0 with our spring scoring system, and the defense has pretty much had their way here in the first quarter with 2.02 left to go. Cody Hodges alongside. I'm David Thetford. Good to have you along here on Fox today. There it is one more time, the scoring guide, and the, the offense is pretty, I mean, it's just normal, what you would expect. But on the defense, uh, you can tell that uh, and they've scored pretty much on every one of those ways except for a touchdown. And they have 13 points up on the board. Davis Webb in at quarterback. He will check at the line of scrimmage, going to change the play here. Split backs, and he'll give it to his left halfback for a short gain of a couple of yards. On the carry that time was Rodney Hall. 5'9", 233, a sophomore out of Angleton, Texas. Came here from, uh, via Tyler Junior College. Pressure coming and touched back in the uh, backfield. Took a little too long to get rid of that one. And uh, celebration with the uh, head referee. Getting back there. Pete you, Robertson. Yeah, Pete Robertson. 
There's another guy we almost uh, put in the uh, the Carillon impact players of the ball game because uh, he's 6'3", 220, and a sophomore out of Longview. Going to be a big-time player for Texas Tech this uh, coming season. Another third and long situation that you want to try to avoid. Yeah, these are not optimum. Here's a little underneath pass. Breaking a tackle, picking up the first down. And Davis Webb bought time, rolling to his left, got it out to Kenny Williams. And Kenny Williams was one-on-one -on -one out there. That's going to be a tough chore for any defender. Right, that's a great play by Davis there to extend it with his feet. And there, it's, he's rolling to his left as a right-handed guy. That's not an easy throw. Um, great play by him and Kenny Williams there. Already. And the coverage was uh, Will Smith. And Will Smith uh, did not make the tackle on Williams. Allowed him to get loose. First down and 10, the ball at the 39-yard line. Second down, they already ran a play well, when we were down. talking. Oh, quick, sorry. quick that, snaps. This is quick. <laughs> thought you were doing hook them horns. Uh, never. <laughs> There's a quick hitter on the outside and uh, up across the 45-yard line. Out to the uh, 47s where they'll mark him down. So a nice uh, pick up there. Hard to see these... Uh, these numbers so quickly. Given the backfield this time. First down. Wyatt spins to the outside. Going to be hammered down from behind after he after he made that move. I think it was Pete Robertson once again who made the stop on Quentin White. But it will be a first down as we're counting it down here. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Don't know if it's what everybody, anybody expected. But the defense is on top of the offense here at the end of one. 15-0. I bet there's a lot of big offensive plays coming up. We'll have it for you right here. So stay with us. The Texas Tech Spring Game on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to Joe's AT&T Stadium, the Texas Tech Spring Game. And I bet these timeouts are driving Cliff crazy. He's probably ready to go, go, go. And we're holding him up here. Here's a Davis Webb in trouble, going to throw it up in the air, and there was an ill-advised pass, going to be picked off back at the 22-yard line. Trying to make the return with the football is J.J. Gaines. He's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line, but right there, Cody, you can talk about that. He got pressure and just made a bad decision. He did. Just the play uh, The play from the start looked like it was messed up. Um, he looked like he was trying to hand it off. The running back didn't take it. Um, you never want to see the quarterback just throw it uh, up for grabs down the field. Um, he's young, um, needs to learn from that, and Cliff will definitely uh, coach him up. Well, you got a coach like Coach Kingsbury who has, was such a, a prolific quarterback. I mean, what a talent Coach Kingsbury was when he played here for Texas Tech. And, and uh, just, uh, you know, we saw what he did with uh, Manziel down at uh, Texas a and uh, I think it, there's lots of reasons people are excited about Coach Kingsbury. Those are a couple, but there are many, many more. They are, I mean, great. It was a great athlete, great student, great quarterback, and no question about it. And I think Davis there, you know, he's got, I'm just trying to make something happen. You want to come out and press the fans, and sometimes you make bad decisions, but he'll learn from it. He might have been trying to throw that one away, and he will learn that you don't throw it away in the center of the field. Here's a fake Brewer going to run with the football. He will pick up the, well, let's see where they touched him. That's where you'll actually be down. We may be headed that direction with concussions. I hope not to where we have touch football, but uh, it's become a serious issue. It is, but Brewer there, I mean, with his legs, he gives a whole new dimension to the, to the offense to be able to run and pick up, you know, eight yards on first down. He was, a, of course, a great passer in high school, but uh, as you mentioned, Cody, he could run the football too. There's Quentin White breaking a tackle. Out, uh, out to the 41 yard line on the defensive end of the field in a heck of a run there by Quentin White. Yeah, it's a great block by number 11, Jakeem Grant there. Um, those plays all depend on how the blocking goes. A little hitch screen on, on the outside on the left side and uh, I don't know whether it was too, too hot or Grant should have had that when intended for Jakeem Grant and went through his hands. It looked like Brewer mishandled the snap there. Anytime you mishandle the shotgun snap, it kind of throws this, the timing off for the rest of the play. Then he probably got in a hurry, put a little extra on it, and second Grant, and 10. Yeah, Grant's thinking that the ball should have already been here. <laughs> and when the ball should have already been there, the defenders are that much closer. Second down and 10 for the offense. They have not scored in the ball game. Swing pass out of the backfield, Quentin White. 
heck of a <laughs> step back inside. Will Smith bought it. Will Smith was able Michael to stay Williams with it and come back and make a stop, a help on the stop. But what a move there. Yeah, great play by Brewer. I think um, his uh, just being around, he, uh, I mean, everything was covered. He took the check down and picked up nine yards there. Great play by Brewer. Given the backfield this time to the 30-yard line. Going to be enough for the first down. Just needed one, and that's about what the offense came up with. They will have a first down. Yeah, sometimes there's a quarterback you want to make the big play, but you got to take what the defense gives you. They don't cover the bat and drop it down and pick up eight, nine yards there. Great play by Brewer on the previous snap. Kenny Williams back in the ball game at uh, running back. Out there at the uh, left tackle is Big Lil Raven Clark, number 62. The guy with really some experience coming back. Uh, James Polk is next to him, 6'6", 332. Here's Williams up through the middle. Pushing the pile inside the 20 down to around the 17 yard line. Another first down for the offense. Boy, Kenny Williams, he was impressive last year and here in the spring has been impressive again. Yeah, great block on that previous play by Bo Carpenter, the right tackle. Kind of opened up that hole. Well, Carpenter's another one. You mentioned his name that uh, I know that there's uh, been a lot of talk about Carpenter and how he's going to have to be one of the mainstays on that offensive front. Second down coming up now. Still about uh, about seven yards needed. The ball at the 14-yard line. Offense has been down here a couple of times, but have not been able to get anything. Here's one into the end zone. Going to be knocked away. Ball a little bit underthrown. And could not, uh, couldn't get there, didn't get there quite quickly enough. Back there on the receiving end was uh, Sean Corker. And he had gotten behind the defense. He did. Uh, I think that was number 30. Austin Stewart maybe came over and made the hit there to dislodge it. 18-0. to Third down and seven now. Empty backfield for Michael Brewer. He will throw it into the end zone at the back. Incomplete. A little bit behind his receiver. Excellent coverage back there once again by the Red Raider defense. We're trying to get your numbers. It's hard to do it with the jerseys rolled up. Aaron Fisher was the intended receiver. But really, the uh, more impressive part of that play was the defensive secondary and the great coverage. Again, I mean, that guy, um, the receiver there was hardly open. Um, Michael made a good throw. Um, it been a tough catch, tough completion. Again, fourth down. Right, Buston to attempt a 31-yard field goal. Line drive, and he missed that one. Looked like he pulled that one to this near side. And the offense has still been shut out here. 18-0. The defense on top of the offense. I think that should add another three points, right, for a missed it's, field goal. That's exactly so, right. Man. Yeah, it should be 21-0. Yeah, 21-0. Of course, it's, it's, you know, the scoreboard operator, he's having a hard time, too, with these rules. Now, hold it here. They get three if you miss it. So that should be 21-0. That's the correct. You're right, Cody. That's uh, that's the score. Well, hey, we've got a special guest down on the sideline with uh, Courtney Davis. Let's uh, Let's go to her. Well, it's kind of weird seeing this guy on the sideline with me and not out on the field, but former number seven, Seth Dagey. Welcome back. How weird is this? Oh, it's super weird, uh, especially just... Just a year out, and uh, but it's fun seeing these guys compete. It was fun seeing all the guys that uh, that I played with last year, and I'm excited. But I'm excited for them, and excited to see everybody. So it's been fun. We were talking just off camera, the different atmosphere already, and you just left in January. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean it's 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 it's, it's way different from when I was here, but uh, you know it's, I think it's a good change, and uh, it was good when I was here too. So I mean it's just a, a different staff and a different philosophy, and I think it's working out in their favor little bit of a quarterback battle maybe that we didn't expect you're close with Michael but Davis so Webb's giving him all he can handle what do you kind of see I think it's good for both of them um, they both need to push each other because you know once you get you know in Big 12 play uh, there, there's some pressure on you and you need to pressure in the spring and to to build your game and, and I think it's, it's good for both of them before I let you get out of here the drafts next week kind of update us on where you stand workouts what you're kind of hoping for yeah I mean it's, it's it's coming up and you know I think I have a shot to get drafted if not you know we'll go the free agent route but uh, we'll see what happens and, 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 and go from there. Thanks, Michael Seth. Thanks. Good to see you. David, back to you guys. Thank you, Courtney, and thank you to Seth Daigie. How about that? Uh, 
one year out, and this is this has got to be really fresh for him. And of course, I'm sure he would have uh, loved to have been here with Coach Kingsbury coming in too. And uh, but uh, he had a great career at Texas Tech. Well, we're going to take a break in the action. They got the score corrected now. It's 23-0 up on the uh, up on the clock with 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. After this uh, punt here, I, I guess what we're going to do, take a break after this punt, another nice punt by Erksleben down to the 20-yard line. 23-0, 10-56 left to go here in the first half of the football game. You're watching Texas Tech spring game on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to the Texas Tech spring game. Uh, a lot of fans here today having a great time. The Texas Tech football team, I guess as a player, you really love this too. I think that was, that was a fan. Did you see that guy? I yeah, mean, he had Gabe full Rivera. padded on. Huh? Gabe Rivera. Oh, nice. That's his old number. Oh. No, it wasn't Gabe, but uh, we'd love to see Gabe. And he gets back up here pretty often. He's probably watching today. And if so, Gabe, but get back to Lubbock as quick as you can. Talk about a great Red Raider football player. That was Gabe Rivera. He was, a, you know, such a big guy and, a, and so athletic, such great feet, and we need a bunch of those here at uh, Texas Tech. I think we've got some ready for next season. Quentin White with the carry on the second down and seven play across the 26-yard line out near the 27-yard line. Tackle made number 30, Austin Stewart. On the tackle that time was Austin Stewart. Six foot 206 junior out of Matthews, North Carolina. Third down play. Step. Davis Webb looking to throw, flushed out, and then just had to get rid of the football. It's incomplete. And another three and out for the defense. And I think Davis, I mean, he'll learn um, that when you, you can step up in the pocket instead of bailing out. Um, and I think that comes with just practice and live reps and things like that where. Stepping up a few steps, can avoid the rush and still stand in there and make a throw. But again, great defense, and here's another punt. Defense has played extremely well today. I think we're going to have Coach Wallerstadt at halftime and maybe uh, Coach Kingsbury. We're hoping for that. Erksleben with another punt. This one into the wind. And I've been impressed with his punting here this afternoon, both into the wind and with the wind, of course. King Grant made the fair catch at the 35-yard line, and the offense will come back on to see what they can do. I think that's the defense's fourth, third, and out. What's the so relationship? There's a defense that's exciting, but again, offensively, we got to move what the I mean. ball. Right. You, you struggle in these scrimmages because, uh, you're, of course, you're looking for success. And by the way, there's uh, the mask rider, a new mask rider that uh, just uh, got in the saddle this week. And... Uh, Led the uh, baseball team uh, last night, uh, led the team out onto the field, and now here today at the spring game. What a great mascot we have here at Texas Tech. As a player, I was always afraid I was going to get run over by that guy <laughs> <laughs> running out of the tunnel, but never did. Well, we have had an incident, as you remember, with the horse one year, but uh, most of the time it's gone, gone well. Here's a swing pass, knocked down. Out on the outside, could have been picked off, and it was uh, all over the play. Looked like he was in the huddle. Was Chris Knight, 252-pound senior. Second down. Still 10 needed. Michael Brewer in at quarterback. Throws it underneath. Has Amaro across the 40. Out to the 43-yard line goes Jace Amaro. Well, he is a load to bring down. He is. If I'm these quarterbacks, I'm going to try to find him every play right now just to get in some rhythm. A big target, easy completion. Look like Dawson Gamble. Let's see, Jeremy Reynolds out there on the stop. There a short uh, gain for the first down. And also on that last stop was uh, number 25, Blake Dees. He's a junior now, six foot uh, 215 out of Spanish Fort, Alabama. Big run up through the middle. Nice collision there as well. Coming up to make the stop is Trey Porter. We talked about him as the impact player, and they've given him a special red jersey. I think it's a, supposed to be a non-contact jersey, but he's out there making tackles. <laughs> so, I mean, Somebody well, needs to tell Trey. Yeah, he might as well put a black one on. 
Well, he, that was a, that may have been the best collision we've had today. It, uh, both players just ran into each other and came to a dead stop. Third down now for Texas Tech offense. Two yards. The ball at the 45-yard line of the defense. Brewer at quarterback. Long count this time. Three wide outs to the top, one to the near side, looking right, slant, has the man caught. First down and then bullying his way and pulling to the 30-yard line is the receiver, and that's going to be Brent Mitchell. Under an 83-pound junior out of Cypress Creek in Houston. Here's the uh, give in the backfield coming to the near side. I noticed Porter did not stick his head in there on Williams that time. That play was kind of disrupted from the beginning. I can't tell the number 40, 43 through the line there. Yeah. Jackson Richards, great play by him. Richards, he's going to be a really good player this year. Delvin Simmons was also over there on the play, number eight. Second down and seven now for the offense. Snap pops up in the air. Brewers got it wide open up through the middle of the field. He'll run with it. And to get to the 20, the 15, and finally touch down. Let's see where they're going to mark him. Gets all the way to the end zone, and he might have scored on that one in a regular tackle football game. He might have. It's funny to watch those defensive guys. They just kind of let off. They know they hit the guy in the blue jersey. They're in trouble. <laughs> Serious business. Well, they let him go and finally touched uh, down at the 25-yard line. where they'll 24-yard line is where they will put the ball. 24-0, the score of the defense leading the offense here this afternoon in the Texas Tech spring game. Brewer, straight drop back, pressure coming, throws to the end zone, overthrown. He had to, he really had to get rid of that one a little early. The pressure was coming through. Receiver was Jakeem Grant, number 10 there, came through for the defense. Yeah. Again, Pete, Pete Robertson. Pete again. Robertson once again. Bringing the pressure. We would report the numbers quicker to you, the players, but most of them have their jerseys bunched up in the front. Here's the give to Quentin White out of the backfield, spinning around, going to be hit at the 22 and driven backwards. On the stop that time is uh, the linebacker, Maka Awe. Sophomore out of Arlington, Texas, played at Summit. 5.20 left to go here in the first half of the ball game. 24-0, the defense with the lead on the offense. Third down here at a big third, down and eight for the offense. Brewer, straight drop back, plenty of time. Swing pass to Williams, hit. Trying to get loose, can't do it. Going to be pulled down at the 21-yard line. And that'll be really essentially only about a yard picked up on the play. That looked like a horse collar tackle. I think that he called it there. Yep, they called yep. it. So it's a good first down. <laughs> the chain. It's an important first down. We'll take them. Couldn't tell if it was uh, Sam McGuavin who uh, was at 13. I believe it was 13 that was uh, on that tackle. They didn't do it intentionally. It's just where he ended up. Williams, uh, you know, he, normally he spins out of most tackles. And he normally, I mean, he'll spin on most moves. It's very difficult to get your hands wrapped around, and that time grabbed him up around the shoulder pads and the neck. There's the give in the backfield. That uh, no problem on that time. Kenny Williams had nowhere to go on that one. Is uh, shot uh, number nine. Brandon Brandon. Jackson was right there. Yeah, great play. By, great play. By him. Jackson's played well here this afternoon. And again, that's one thing you don't want to do this close to the end zone is lose four or five yards on first down. Second down and 14 now for the offense. They have not scored here in the first half. Brewer across the middle, knocked down. Good coverage once again. Trying to go to Jason Morrow inside the five-yard line. Broken up by J.J. Gaines. Great play there at safety. Gaines with an excellent read on that uh, on that pass. Made a nice cut underneath. Yeah, we might need to get on the jug machine and work on catching those balls. Pick it off. He had a shot at that one because he read it well. Third down and 14 now for the offense. 3.15 left to go in the first half. Brewer with an empty backfield. High snap, but he's got it. Pressure coming across the middle. Caught! Touchdown! 
Texas Tech. Texas Tech offense, beautiful pass to Jace Amaro. Rolling right in the middle of the end zone, and Brewer put it right on the money. He did Brewer did a good job. He did a great job. Had a little pressure, avoided, stepped up in the pocket, found his big man, touchdown for the Raiders. You know, you wonder about the Tech fans that are here today. We have become so offensive dominated here. I think that, you know, they felt like that we we're behind. They probably did, yeah. I'm just <laughs> glad they're not booing yet, you know, so that's good. You know, we're not booing at the spring game. Uh, they're, I guarantee you, the crowd that's here today, and there's a bunch that couldn't make that are watching on TV, big fans of Texas Tech football, I promise you. 24-7 now. The offense is on the board. 229 left to go here in the first half. You're watching the Texas Tech spring game on Texas Tech TV on Fox. 24-7. The Texas Tech offense on the board. And... Uh, we're going to be offense back out on the field at the 25-yard line. Going to be is it Davis back in there? Davis Webb back in at quarterback for Texas Tech. He'll go empty backfield on the first play from scrimmage. Quentin White out of the backfield across the middle has a man caught at 35, the 40, 45, spinning across midfield and into the uh, defensive side of the field. That was a, a nice run after the catch that time Brent by Brent Mitchell. Junior out of Houston, Cy, Cy Creek. Swing pass to the outside, nothing there on this one. That was Mitchum once again. Let's go down to the sideline and Courtney Davis. Thanks, David. I'm now joined by Associate Athletic Director of Tickets, Eric Book. Eric, you've experienced a surge in ticket sales like this town hasn't seen in quite a while. Talk about what the excitement around the Kingsbury era as well as the 2013 season. Uh, it's been huge. You know, we were ready to go December 15th when the announcement was made. And that week we sold 1,500 seats, it, which is incredible for that time period. Since then, we're up to 3,800 new seats, um, which has to be a record here at Texas Tech because the excitement is unbelievable right now. Uh, in addition, we're at 28,000 seats already. We finished last year at 32,000. Um, so we're well on track to breaking our season ticket record. And you did say that all premium seating and all suites are sold already for the upcoming season. That's correct. We are completely out of all suite and club inventory which is also great. Now talk about the event you had this morning, something the fans haven't had a chance to do in the past. They got to come in early before the spring game and select their own seat. Yes, we, uh, for the first time ever, held a select a seat event around the spring game. So it allowed people to come out, take a look at all the different sections, different prices, view sight lines, yard lines, all that kind of stuff. Um, it made it easy for our fans, and they were very appreciative that we were able to do that for them today. And there's still some flyers sitting around in seats around the Jones. So season tickets for the 2013 season are still available. Call this guy who got you set up, 806-742-TECH, or go online, texastech.com. Thanks, Eric. Thank Appreciate you. it. Bye. David, back to you. Thank you, Courtney, and thank you to Eric Book. He's uh, a new guy here with uh, Texas Tech Tickets and uh, one of the uh, – Social athletic directors in charge of ticket sales here at Texas. That's a huge job, and we're not just, not just for football, but for all the sports. And uh, there has been a big, big surge in uh, tickets, and there have there really weren't that many available to begin with because fan support's been good for Red Raider football. Great, yeah, great group of fans. Um, and just come back and see the Jones and the new addition and the scoreboards being built. It does. Oh. Uh, it's a, a beautiful stadium. Sports Clip Haircuts is a proud sponsor of Texas Tech Athletics. Stop by your nearest Sports Clip location for your all-star treatment. At Sports Clips, it's good to be a guy. Sport Clip. One twenty-eight left to go here in the first half of the ball game. 26 to seven, the defense on top. They just had a sack. While Courtney was doing the uh, the interview, and then another three and out. So the defense, uh, Texas Tech, got to be pleased. There's another sack of the uh, Red Raider offense. This time it's Michael Brewer. The previous time uh, on the sack, it was Davis Webb who was sacked. And now Brewer out there, the ball at the two-yard line. Yeah, uh, that's as a quarterback, that's on him. He had plenty of time to get rid of it, and just sometimes you just need to take your loss, throw it away, and move on to second down. Brandon Jackson was coming through there. In the end zone with the throw, almost caught down. That one would have been a foot race. That could have gone for six. 
as uh, out there was number 82, Brent Mitchum, and that ball just a little low. But he split the defense. He split the defense right there and had a chance. If he could have made the reception there, that would have been fun to watch the race to the other end. Third down and 20 now for Texas Tech's offense. Brewer deep in the end zone, looking to throw across the middle, tipped up in the air. Porter with the pick. No, it hit the turf. Porter laid out for that one. Trey Porter did. Tipped up in the defense, very opportunistic here this afternoon as they have been in the, the secondary, Cody. I've been really impressed with the way they play. They have. They've done a great job. The receivers haven't really been open. Um, the quarterbacks are having to find tight windows, and anytime you're throwing in those tight windows, things like that are going to happen. Deflections, balls get batted up. Bad things usually happen. So another punt for Erksleben. He has been a real bright spot here punting the ball today. Of course, no, no pressure or anything like that on him, but uh, still he is booted the ball down the field deep and uh, some pretty good hang time. That ball turns over once again. Grant will drop it at the 45-yard line. But the offense will come back uh, to work there in good field position and only 42 seconds to work with here, Cody. And, and uh, I, I guess they'll be moving into the wind with the, in these last 42 seconds. I'm not for sure how many that is, but that's a, maybe the fifth or sixth, third and out the defense has had. So the defense, again, playing really, really well. We will have Coach Cliff Kingsbury at halftime here with us. I don't know exactly uh, how we'll do that, but uh, maybe Courtney down on the sideline or maybe he'll put on a headset and let Cody grill him here at halftime. Just knowing him as a friend, I don't know if he'll be too happy to talk to <laughs> you and me at halftime right now. He's going to be mad at us because of these timeouts. It's taking too long to get going again. But that's a big part. I mean, that's, a, that's college football today. You play on all these TV games and uh, these offenses that try to keep it moving real quickly, it, um, it makes it difficult, these, uh, these timeouts. Here's an underneath pass caught by Grant at the 50. Makes a great move at the 45. Gets to the outside at the 40. Trying to shake a tackler at the 35. Spinning around, taken down at around the 34-yard line. Jakeem Grant showing pretty good strength there as well with that stiff arm. They have him listed at 5'6". He kind of looks smaller from that from up here, but quick and shifty. Great play by him. Tremendous stop there in reverse of direction. Now running to the near side. How about that stiff arm? Making a move at the 25 and getting out of bounds is Quentin White. I think you can see why people are excited about this freshman red shirt out of College Station. He has tremendous moves and great strength. Yeah, big stiff arm there by him. Lake Dees was there, and he just uh, sidestepped and let Dees run by. Picked up another first down, 23 seconds to go here, and the offense trying to get in the end zone, trailing 28 to 7. Davis Webb in the quarterback, gives it in the backfield. Big hit. Trying to find his way, weave his way, and uh, find a hole up through there. and Took a little too long. And the defense responded. Going to call a timeout to stop the clock with 16 seconds left to go here in the first half. And the ball at the 21-yard line of the defense. And the offense would really like to get another touchdown on the board. And his halftime is only about 10 minutes, but as an offense, you would like to score one more time. Do you get a little momentum? Exactly. Hey, Texas Tech baseball fans, be sure to head out to Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park to catch the last two games of the Texas Tech-Kansas baseball series. Game two starts tonight at 6.30 p.m. with the first pitch coming at at uh, 1 o'clock on Sunday. So 6.30 tonight, 1 o'clock on Sunday. Kansas uh, leads the series 1-0 as the Jayhawks won last night 4-3. It's a heck of a ball game, and uh, they came back late to get that 4-3 win. Red Raider baseball, 6.30 tonight. 16 seconds to go, empty backfield. Webb, at quarterback, throws it across the middle, a little behind, off the hands. Again, uh, probably it uh, could have been caught, but was not. It'll be th third down now coming up. Still eight yards needed for the first, but that's becoming irrelevant. Irrelevant. There's only 12 seconds left. It looked like we had two receivers there in the same spot. I don't know which one thought that was going to catch it, but you could tell there was some confusion there. 
There's a little floater down the sideline to the end zone. Diving catch, no incomplete. What a great effort by Sean Corker. He really laid out for that one. It was a great throw by Davis there. He's got man coverage one-on-one, -on -one, made a great throw. That's all you can ask for. Receiver made a great tip, but just ground knocked it out. So seven seconds now up on the clock, and Texas Tech will try another field goal. So far, 0 of 2 in the ball game. Ryan Buston, who has, uh, of course, got experience. This will be a 36-yard attempt for Buston right from the middle of the field. Good snap. Ball is down. Kick is on its way. Hits the upright on the right side and comes back out on the field. And it is income. He missed it again. So, oh, a three on field goals. That adds three points to the defensive side of the ledger. Should make it 31 to 7. Here at halftime, they haven't put the points up on the board yet. We're going to uh, get Courtney set up. Courtney Davis down on the uh, sideline, hopefully, with the head football coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Cliff Kingsbury. He is. Uh, Wallerstadt. We're going to have Coach Wallerstadt uh, here first with us. Matt Wallerstadt, who was uh, last year at AM for a year. And uh, this will be a quick halftime, so you'll want to stay with us. We'll have Coach Wallerstadt, the defensive coordinator, and then Coach Cliff Kingsbury. Down to Courtney with the defensive coordinator, Matt Wallerstadt. Thanks, David. Now joined by Coach Wallerstead. Coach, you have to be pleased with your defense's performance. Well, it's been great all spring. We've got a lot of energy. Guys are buying in. We haven't really shown much today, but they're playing the package of what we have brought to the dance here today. They're playing great. We've got to close it out now in the second half. Talk about how important it will be to keep these guys motivated and, and not let the fatigue get to you. In the well, we've been, we've been back and forth all spring with the offense. The last, Friday night lights was a perfect example. Went 61 snaps. They're really good defense. The last 30 were really bad. We're going to talk to them about that, remind them about that, and hopefully we can close this thing out and they respond. Thanks, Coach Wally. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. David, back to you. Thank you, Courtney, and thanks, Coach Wallerstadt. Halftime here at Jones Stadium, 28-7, the defense on stop. You're watching Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to the Texas Tech Spring Game, 28-7. Here at halftime, it was, uh, yeah, it is 28-7. What's up on the scoreboard? Let's go to the sideline. The new head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Cliff Kingsbury with Courtney Davis. Thanks, David. Coach, obviously a slow first half. What did you tell your guys at halftime? Yeah, just got to make plays. You know, we wanted to keep it base and just see guys come out here and make plays. And the defense is doing a great job. Offensively, we got to, some young guys got to step up and make plays. We saw this at the Friday Night Lights scrimmage, too. You kind of you want to see him beat up on yourself because that's it's your team overall. But what are you kind of looking for in the second half? Just a couple guys on offense to step up. I thought the quarterbacks have handled themselves pretty well. Uh, first time in front of a big crowd. Um, and then offensive line, you know, rotating seven guys, so it's been a little dicey, but not bad. Good effort on the defensive side of the ball. Overall, the atmosphere, what you expected today? Great atmosphere. The fans really came out, and the kids were fired up, so it's, it's been a fun day. Get after the second half. Thanks, Coach. David, back to you. Thank you, Courtney, and thanks to Coach Cliff Kingsbury, and it is a great atmosphere here today. 28-7 to 7 here at halftime. Second half coming up. It'll be a running clock. You're watching Texas Tech football on Texas Tech TV on Fox. I got into coaching. Here we go. Second half action about to get underway. They put 10 minutes up on the clock. I understand it's going to be a running clock here in the second half. First uh, play from scrimmage. Kenny Williams with the carry. And he'll be spun down out around the 30-yard line. Pick up about five yards on the play. Yeah, tackled there by number 98, Anthony Smith from um, Houston, Texas. Michael Brewer is at quarterback. Hits tomorrow. That'll be enough for the first down as he gets out across the 35 up to around the 36-yard line. Also on there on the offensive line, number 51, Tony Morales. He is a 6'3", 302-pounder, and Jason Morrow was down on the field. And that is not good. He was, remember last year he was injured. He was hit, uh, had the injury to his spleen. This looks like more maybe a leg injury of some kind although I'm really not sure about that. They'll help Amaro off to the sideline. Certainly one of the last things you want to have happen at a spring game is have anyone injured. Yeah. You certainly don't want one of your right. go-to guys. Right. And hopefully just kind of banged up, walk it off, and he'll be all right. 
First and 10, Michael Brewer at quarterback, looking to throw right side, has a man caught at the 42, breaking away, breaking tackles is Reginald Davis. Let's go back and take a look and see where tomorrow might have uh, been injured. Really couldn't tell anything there. Three defenders there making the tackles were already back to play. Uh, Jakeem Grant can't get anything. In fact, he'll lose a couple on the next play. And it'll be second down and 12 for the offense. There you see Brewer also in there on the offensive line. Trey Keenan, 6'6", 280, freshman out of Argyle. There's a pass across the middle up to the 30-yard line. Got the uh, three-yard loss back plus about five on that carry. Sean Corker with the uh, with the catch and the run. The defense is doing a great job today of just kind of gang tackling. There's always three or four defenders on the tackle. They're running to the ball uh, really well here today. Quentin White goes in motion, empties the backfield, back to pass. Brewer underneath again. Running from that outside uh, back across the middle is Brent Mitchum. He's been a big, uh, he's been a go-to guy today for these quarterbacks. He is. He's got a lot of passes. Not the biggest guy, but, man, he is uh, making plays. Back to Here he comes White. again. There he is again on the quick hitter on the outside, breaking tackles, and now going to be tripped up at about the 17-yard line. Go down there. And making the stop uh, for the defense. Well, it was Michael Alway with the with the stop out there, number 18. Second down and about uh, three yards needed. Brewer looking left. Now back across the middle. Incomplete to Quentin White. And that ball looked like it surprised him a little bit, uh, Cody. It did. I mean, Brewer did a great job looking down the field. Everything was covered. Um, usually in this offense, you got the back either in the flat or kind of right above the center for a check down. Uh, didn't look like he was expecting to get the ball thrown to him there. Jason Morrow's back out on the field. Thank you, Courtney Davis, for that report. Quentin White running to the outside, cuts it up, first down. And the offense uh, on the move here. We'll see, I'm sure, that even though it was a short halftime, that uh, Coach Kingsbury, who's really the offensive coordinator head coach, I'm sure he instilled into the guys he wants to see plays made. They do. I mean, we've been here all day, so now we got to convert and get seven points. Empty backfield once again. This White will move out to the slot. Across the middle, there's Amaro inside the, at the nine-yard line, going to be driven backwards, and there's the whistle as forward progress is stopped. Just trying to get these uh, numbers. Looks like it was number 13, Sam. Sam McGuavin. With, I'll let you with the last name With there. the stop. Second down now and five. Ball at the eight-yard line, up through the middle. And the ball is loose. White uh, had it knocked out of his hands, and the defense has come up with the football. Coming out of that uh, pile with it is uh, number 30, Austin Stewart, 206-pounder out of Matthews, North Carolina. And he comes up with the football, and the defense with another stop of the offense. We're going to take another break here on the, from the Texas Tech Spring Game. You're watching Texas Tech football on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to the Texas Tech Spring Game here at Jones AT&T Stadium. I'm now joined by Texas Tech Athletic Director Kirby Hocutt. First of all, well, let's get the monster out of the room. What is that board and how excited are you for it? It's a big screen, right? It's a, it's a big, big TV, but we're excited for it. We're actually ahead of schedule, but it's going to be the eighth largest high definition video board in all of college football. And it's going to change the environment and the atmosphere of our game day. So we're excited about it and think it's going to change the whole game day element for our fans. They'll enjoy it. The team will enjoy it. Couldn't have asked for a better day for a spring game here in Lubbock, Texas. I tell you, it's a beautiful day. Sunshine, a little breeze, so uh, we're fortunate. What a great turnout. Our record uh, turnout ever for a spring game. So the excitement, the energy around our program is at a record high, and it's a great time to be a Red Raider. You must be loving this. The defense has definitely shown up today, former linebacker. What do you kind of assess throughout spring ball? I know you've made it to some practices. Well, I have. It's so hard to tell in spring ball when you're going against each other. But the energy, the excitement from the players and the coaching staff is a recipe for success. It's uh, been fun to watch, and uh, it's going to be a fun fall. And I uh, couldn't be more happier to have Cliff here back home leading our football program forward. 
Lastly, there's a lot of excitement around campus too. The baseball team at home against Kansas tonight, but the women's tennis team clinched their second straight Big 12 title yesterday. Uh, talk about the state of the athletic department throughout the spring and going into the fall. Well, we've had good success this year. When you think back to uh, soccer team having its best year in, pro in program history, uh, volleyball. They're coming at us. There we go. Offense has turned it on. That's what you like to see. I know Thedford's up there giving us play-by-play -play on that one. Absolutely. But it, it's been an exciting year. Soccer's had their best season ever. Volleyball had their best year in a decade. And then you mentioned women's tennis, and tomorrow afternoon I get to present them with uh, their Big 12 championship trophy the second year in a row our track and field men's indoor team finished fifth in the country and, and the excitement around football the excitement around uh, bringing in tubby smith who's going to be a great fit for our, our basketball program so it's exciting time to be a red raider and uh, there are going to be many victories in the years to come thanks for taking some time kirby i'll let thank you uh, stay on the offensive side you've been some good luck <laughs> david back to you Thank you, Courtney, and thanks to Kirby Hocutt, our Texas Tech athletic director. He did cause us to miss the biggest play of the whole ball game for the offense. Uh, maybe we can show it one more time. I think we've already shown it a couple of times, but that was uh, Derek Edwards on the receiving end, the sophomore out of Brenham, Texas, and what a pass. We did see the flag come in, and one of the flags was late, but it was pass uh, interference against the uh, defense, so the touchdown will stand for the offense. Yeah, great, great play. Great throw by Davis there. Um, they've had man coverage on the outside all day. Uh, we've missed a few um, over the top at that time. A receiver made a great catch, a great run after the catch. Touchdown. Kramer, five, number 45, will come in to attempt the extra point. It is up, and it is good. 31-14 left, uh, I mean, with uh, 3.44 left to go in this 10-minute segment here in the second half of the Texas Tech spring game. A lot of energy. Tech fans here. You're watching it here on Texas Tech TV on Fox. Welcome back to the Texas Tech spring game. 31-14 here in the second half of the ball game. Just clicked under three minutes to go in this first 10-minute period with a running clock here in the in the second half. Looks like Michael Brewer at quarterback. It is. He will throw it. Has a man caught at the 25-yard line in traffic that time. And uh, going up and uh, pulling, the, uh, pulling it down that, I believe it was 87, Aaron Fisher. Here's the give out of the backfield. Short gain up around the 32-yard line. Defense there once again. Making the stop uh, that time, Jordan Hamilton. Well, they got Jordan Hamilton, a defensive tackle listed at six foot one ninety four. I think that last catch was twenty seven. Brad Pearson, he's a Lubbock Monterey boy. Okay, good. Yeah, so local guy. So yeah, great, yeah, great catch by him. Glad you got that corrected for me. Keep Mama happy. Uh, well, I know it, especially for Monterey folks here in town. I know. I mean, you have got, your kids went to Coronado, so I figured that's why. But you, I went to yeah. Monterey. Oh, okay. All right. Now, I did graduate from Monterey. My son Tanner graduated from Coronado, and daughter Rachel from Trinity. But uh, we just were all over town. <laughs> I did coach at Coronado though for a little while. Brewer back to pass again, down the middle of the field, overthrown, had a man wide open. But uh, Brewer did have a lot of pressure right up in his face coming up through the middle that time. And once again, he was trying to get the ball to uh, to Brad Pearson. Just one of those where he threw off his back foot, and as a quarterback, anytime you throw off your back foot, the ball's going to sell. It's going to be long, and um, that's what happens. 1-14 to 14 the score. Defense has been really impressive here today for Texas Tech. Given the backfield on the running play, on the second down and five play, it's, well, it'll be close. Looks like it's going to be at about the 39-yard line, so a yard short on the carry that time by number 40, and that's Rodney Hall. 33. You got a big guy there coming through downhill. It's a lot, a lot coming at you. Low center of gravity. Given the backfield, first down, breaks it for more out near the 48 or 9-yard line. Another another great run there by Rodney Hall. Yeah. Yep. 
First down and 10 for the offense. 20 seconds to go here in the quarter. Brewer looks left. Now comes back right across the middle. Has a man at the 40. Knocked down immediately. The defense is right there. And that time it is number 87, Aaron Fisher, with the reception. Brewer did a great job there, just staying active in the pocket, setting his feet, making a great completion. And that running play up through the middle. That's going to end the quarter. 31-14, one quarter to go here. The Texas Tech spring game on Texas Tech TV on Fox. We're back here at the Texas Tech spring game here at Jones AT&T Stadium. And as I walk the sidelines here, several former players are in town, not only for the spring game, but to honor a dear member of the Texas Tech football family, Jenny Bailey, who has been a part of the football family for 26 years, was just recently diagnosed with brain cancer. And in order to help offset medical costs, the football staff, along with several other former players, are holding a Blitzen for Bailey benefit at Nick's Sports Bar and Grill off of 98. Street here in Lubbock this evening following the spring game. You're seeing the details on your screen right now, but it's set for 7 o'clock tonight to 9 o'clock. Several former players, including Michael Crabtree, have donated items, including his Super Bowl cleats from this past Super Bowl. If you can, get out, donate, have a blast at Nick's, and give to a great woman who is in the fight for her life. Now, if you want to, if you can't come tonight and you would like to donate, there is a fun set up at First Capital Bank here in Lubbock. It's called the Jenny Bailey Fund. Call First, ba First Capital Bank of Texas here in Lubbock for more details. David? Thank you, Courtney. That last pass catch was by Pearson and uh, going quickly here now with the offense. Of course, that uh, goes without saying. That's exactly what they're doing every single time. Brent Mitchum with another reception on the tackle out there. That time was number 50. And that is uh, Tyler Scalzi. There's another quick hitter caught and uh, inside the 10-yard line. And Brewer looking good on this drive, getting it down there quickly. There's Pearson again on the catch. Pearson again on the catch. And up over the top defensively was uh, Chris Williams, number six. Offense uh, moving even quicker. Rodney Hall, the uh, number 40, the running back, uh, built like a fullback out there. Second down coming up, five yards needed. Second and uh, goal from the five-yard line. There's a bad snap, but uh, Brewer's able to get it corralled. He'll come to the near side and just throw the ball away, and a good decision there. Not going to try to force anything. The timing of the play was all off, and lived to uh, throw again here on third down. Jenny Bailey. Uh, we talked about her, Cody, and, of course, she's a good friend of, of mine and, and a very dear friend of yours. And uh, it's it's it kind of neat to hear these Texas Tech football players. She's like a good friend to all of you. She is. I mean, she was kind of mom to all of us. You know, we all leave home and leave mom behind, and she was the one that just an amazing, amazing lady. Who touched on there by number 11. Jakeem Grant, Grant, Grant yeah, with, the catch, catch. with the reception. And uh, Michael Brewer. Drives the team right down the field. You get another look at it right here, and a nice job of getting open. And that is momentum going to the end zone for the touchdown. And the offense making a little bit of a game out of it here now, 31 to 20, with the try for the extra point still to come. Great drive there by Michael um, and Brewer and the boys. But back to Miss Bailey, um, just an amazing woman, as Courtney said, in the fight for her life. So it encourage Tech fans and people tonight come out to Nick's help out. Yeah. Just an amazing lady. Amazing, amazing She lady. really is. Really, really has affected, had such a positive impact on so many. 31 to 21. 651 left to go in there in the Texas Tech spring game on Texas Tech TV on Fox. 31-21 the score. You look at the uh, new scoreboard down there on the north end and uh, some of the crew up in there watching and enjoying the ball game today. Here's a Brewer again. Going to throw deep down the far side. Good arm. And with that win, just a little too long. So he tried to go out there. It's actually uh, Clayton Nichols in quarterback. Oh, Clayton 15. Nichols yeah, from Abilene Cooper. Yep, that's yeah. Him. Used to do his high school games on the, on the radio. And this kid's got another strong arm. It's amazing. Really, 
Cody, when you look right now at, with uh, Nicholas out there, and this kid's an outstanding prospect, good size, strong. Uh, we've got some really good quarterbacks here in the Texas Tech camp. They do. I mean, all of them can uh, can play. All of them are mobile, athletic. Um, there's been. I was over at the facility before the game. A lot of recruits in. Some of the, the quarterback from White House, Texas, is here. And uh, I mean, so I know Cliff is recruiting that position really hard. And what better guy to do that than Cliff Kingsbury? Look at that bullet across the middle, caught up around the 40-yard line, going to be thrown backwards. That's Pearson again. Brad Pearson. Having an impact here in the second half of the ball game and a beautiful pass from uh, Clayton Nicholas that time. Swing pass, Pearson again, near side, going to be hit. Big collision there. Defense running to the football well. Complete to number 27, Brad Pearson. Number 36 coming up. Stop number 47, Eric Carter. Theory, theory at Nick Niguama. We're going to have to just find guys that have easier names to make the tackle. Gar Garrett Carter was there as well. <laughs> Apologize, and uh, I don't have really a pronunciation. Spring game's a little bit more of a stripped-down broadcast, but uh, there's a good pass. There's finding the open area out there and making the catch up at the 40, down to the 40-yard line. Number 87, Aaron Fisher there again. Fisher with the uh, catch and on the stop. Garrett Carter once again, number 47. Rolling right, and looking to throw, and are they going to say he was touched? Are He's they... probably down there behind the line of scrimmage. Um, but, man, Nicholas has looked great coming off the bench there, this yeah. drive. Throwing the ball well, under, you can tell he understands the offense. He's well, going to roll out here, and I, th I think that... 27 there, yeah. probably could have blown him up, but knows better in this situation. Zach Winbush, the 219-pound junior out of Shirts Clemens. So it's second down now. And about 12 needed. Nicholas throws the ball down low. It's going to be caught for the if it's completion, and it is. That's a first down at the 29-yard line. Brett Mitchum again there on the catch. Mitchum's another guy that's really uh, made a name for himself today. He was already down, but uh, Bobby Asabio comes over to make the stop anyway. Here's a Catch and another first down at the, around the 17-yard line. Two minutes left to go here in this scrimmage. 31-21, and the offense on the move again. It's going to be a big autograph session out here today. It's immediately after this spring game. There's a break of a tackle down at the five to the goal line. Touchdown. Great play by Meacham there. He is balanced and uh, just using his arm to keep his uh, footing and was able to get in for the touchdown. So Clayton Nicholas comes in, drives the team right down the field, gets the ball to Mitchum on the outside, and he puts it in the end zone. It's a great thing about the spring game. I know there's some receivers that aren't playing today because of injuries and things like that, but it gives a chance like for Mitchum and, and Pearson to step up and make plays. And, you know, in this offense, a lot of guys are going to get catches, and those two guys are having a really great day. Well, you mentioned those receivers that aren't playing, Bradley Marquez, uh, number four, who's uh, such a tremendous athlete, and of course, five who comes in to add the extra point. Uh, you think you know you think of Eric Ward, and what a big time player Eric Ward is for Texas Tech, and one of the, he'll be one of the best uh, receivers in the country this year. He's had a great year. I know they they held them out today. Probably could have played, but again, it's a spring game. No, no reason to get hurt or anything like that. But uh, whatever quarterback ends up being the starter, are going to have plenty, plenty of weapons around them come time for the fall. Lots of good weapons out on the outside and, of course, in the backfield. Tremendous running backs coming back for Texas Tech. Uh, you know, we didn't, we haven't talked about uh, DeAndre Washington, who is a uh, 5'8", 182-pound sophomore out of Missouri City, Texas. He's not playing today, and he's one. I'm telling you, Cody, you, you're aware of him. He is one tremendous athlete. Here's a schedule. We talked about it earlier in the in the broadcast. We down to the Big 12 on October the 5th, Kansas, and then Iowa State here at home. This, this year, you got to go on the road to West Virginia, to Oklahoma, to Texas. None of those either. Of course, the Baylor game will be uh, at the neutral side. But the uh, Texas game, look at that, Thanksgiving. It's going to be a big uh, feature game. Rolling out of the back, uh, there is a... Uh, Michael Brewer, is he back in there? 
I think that's Clayton Nicholas again, number 15. I think he's still in. There it is. You're exactly right. 15 instead of 16. So the 6'3", 216 pounder. He's a freshman red shirt out of Abilene Cooper. 31-28 the score. Offense uh, trying to move the ball down the field. Nicholas looking to throw across the middle. Caught at the 47-yard line. Pearson again. Brad Pearson. Nicholas has done a great job coming in, stepping up in the pocket and throwing the ball down the field. Everybody was talking about Michael Brewer, Davis Webb, and now Nicholas leading the team. There's a big 10-yard run, 11 yards on first down. Of course, the, the time is the, the factor here now. Rodney Hall with the carry under a minute to go. They do. Uh, the clock is moving. It's a moving clock, and now a player a little slow in getting up one of the defenders. It's number 48, it looks like. But it's not number 48. It just looks like it is. No one six. No one coach Kingsbury as well as I do. I think he's probably going to try to score so the offense has more points before the end of the game. Chris Knighton was the player that uh, came over to the sideline. Well, you know Coach Kingsbury pretty well, Cody. And know that <laughs> there's no question about that. Here's another pass to the outside, trying to make a move and get loose. Can't do it at the 35-yard line. Pass complete to number 88, Brennan Blakemore. There's a new receiver, Brennan Blakemore, with the uh, catch. Freshman out of Wimberley, Texas. On the stop uh, is Chris Williams, number six. Ball is uh, to the outside and. Clock is stopped now, 22 seconds to go. Going to be a timeout going to be called out on the field. Look like coming up to make the stop that time was uh, number 45, Jordan Vestal. Out of Lubbock, Monterey. Did uh, Jordan's games in high school as, as well. In fact, he was probably back there battling with Clayton Nicholas. And, I'm, uh, you know, Nicholas at uh, Abilene Cooper, he was really – Highly regarded and, and sought after as a high school quarterback coming into college at Texas Tech. Very lucky to uh, to get him on board here with the Red Raiders. There will be an autograph session here on the field at Jones uh, AT&T Stadium immediately after the Texas Tech spring game. And you'll be able to uh, go down and get uh, autographs from all your favorite players and they'll all be down there. The coaching staff will be down there as well. So. Going to be a fun afternoon. Then you can head over to Danlaw Field at uh, Rip Griffin Park for the Texas Tech Kansas Big 12 baseball game. Here's Nicholas going to run with the ball to the 20 to the 15 and out of bounds with 14 seconds left up on the clock, and they'll stop it there. 31 to 28. The defense still with the lead. Well, we're going to have a probably a pretty quick exit here once the game is over, Cody. And I want to, I want to thank you. Uh, great job today, coming back here and being a part of this. Thrown in the end zone, it's going to be picked off, and of course the receiver wanting uh, pass interference in the end zone. No flag is coming. The receiver, which was Brennan Blakemore, was down in the end zone. Didn't have a chance at it. Yeah, the DB there might have got away with one, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's how it ends. And uh, man, it's fun. Thanks for having me. Well, what a, what a lot of fun here today. And I think the defense, so if you look down on the field, we'll watch this last play here. I couldn't see exactly who came up with it. Uh, 22, was it uh, that came up with it? Dawson uh, Gamble. Dawson Gamble with the interception to end the ball game. But uh, I was watching the defense. They seem to be having a little bit uh, more uh, spring in their step and a little more celebration as, they, as the uh, zeros ended up on the clock up there. But uh, it'll be, it's a good day for Texas Tech. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement. And I know you had a lot of fun being back yeah, and watching been, Coach Kingsbury. Yeah, it's been great. And I just uh, got to spend some time this morning with uh, Coach Kingsbury and the other guys. Um, I, I, I played with every one of them that are coaching here at some point. You know, some of them are older, but spent a lot of time with those guys. So um, I know they're excited. They want to be here. Uh, the players have bought in and going to continue to get better. Big things happening at Texas Tech. Cody Hodges, thank you for being here today. Courtney Davis down on the sideline. Appreciate you as always. Great job. And for all of you Red Raider fans out there, thanks for tuning in today. 
Texas Tech football going to be big in the spring. 34-28, the final score here today. The defense over the offense in the Texas Tech spring game. Thanks for tuning in. Texas Tech TV on Fox.